CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the future. Because the story you're about to hear is a tale of mystery, crime, and adventure in a world 60 years older than our own. Whether that world is 60 years wiser is a question you'll have to answer for yourself. But we want to warn you right now that you might not like our futuristic hero very much. You may even dislike him a great deal. For after all, he is a criminal, a swindler, a con man, a fugitive, and... uh, Perhaps something even worse. All we ask is that you don't judge him until the last sound is heard. Even if it turns out to be this sound. You'll hit Mrs. Sorensen. That's right, everybody. You'll hurt your friend, Mrs. Sorensen. And if you don't let me out of this place, I'll hurt her myself. She's an old woman. Yes. And I haven't killed an old woman for days. I'm feeling the urge right now. So let me out. Our mystery drama, The Night We Died, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Bob Reddick and Joan Shea. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The year of our Lord, 2043. It's a vastly different world in many respects. In others, particularly in respect to human nature, it's a world very much like the one we know. We think you'll recognize the kind of human Toby Kane is. A man with an ugly past and an uncertain future. But there were two things you could predict about the future of Toby Kane. One was that he wouldn't be called Toby Kane for very long. Two, that there would be trouble ahead. Yes? Harry? Sam? How the heck are you, Harry? It's not Harry. You know my name is Toby Kane. That's the name you called me at the hotel, right? (laughs) Sure, that's right. Oh, you make it tough on a guy keeping up with you, Harry. I mean Toby. I'd like to know how you kept up with me, Sam. How did you know I'd left Callisto? Who told you my new name? Mutual friends, Toby. Everybody knows that you gave Moffat the slip again. <laughs> that cop's going to get awful sick of chasing you. He won't be chasing me anymore. Harry Rentlow is dead. He committed suicide on Callisto. <laughs> sure, I get the idea. Listen, Toby, uh, you must be pretty strapped by now. Could you use some high financing? You offering me a loan, Sam? Heck no, I'm offering you a project. I could use some experienced help. Can I see you at the hotel tonight? All right. Meet me in the Neptune Lounge. Oh, that's great, Harry. Look forward to it. Uh, The name is Toby. Toby Kane. (laughs) I swear, I I wouldn't have known you, pal. That surgeon you used. Hey, tell me something. How many face changes have you had? I don't remember. Three, four. The face of yours must be pretty tired by now. Get to the point, Sam. What's the project? Well, it's a phony stock deal. The old classic asteroid mines. You know. Sure, I know. I practically invented it. Who's the fish? A rich widow named Sorensen. Her husband was a major killed during the moon revolt. He left her some 500,000 credits when he died. She was looking for a safe investment with a counter-inflationary return. In other words... The old dame was looking for a killing. Greedy people in this world, Toby. What went wrong? Some crook came along, killed the deal. What crook? Some phony medium. Old Lady Sorensen's a great believer in the spirit world. This madam, what's her name, told her that her husband didn't approve of the investment. I don't even know who she is. I've spent three months cultivating this deal, and now it's frozen. Maybe this medium has her own plans for Sorensen's credits. Maybe you could arrange a split. How? When I don't even know her name. Well, there are ways to find out. 
Give me Mrs. Sorensen's full name and address. Come on in, Toby. Hey, Vanessa, he's here. Well, uh, hello, Mr. Kane. Hello. Sam tells me you've come up with a solution to our problem. Vanessa knows the whole scam, so you can trust her all the way. I didn't say I had the complete solution. What I have is the name of the medium. How'd you get it, Toby? Oh, it was easy. Mrs. Sorensen was a rich widow, right? Rich widows have their habits, like taking a Mars cruise, for instance. I called Mrs. Sorensen and spoke to a maid. Said I was from the White Line Cruise Company and wanted to clear up our records on her Mars trip. Sure enough, she took the trip in 32. But how did that help you? The next thing I did was write Mrs. Sorensen a letter. I've got a copy right here. Dear Mrs. Sorensen, I doubt that you'll recall me since ten long years have gone by since our late meeting. But I still recall with pleasure our delightful chats aboard the Mars cruise, particularly concerning our mutual interest in the spirit world. Oh, wait a minute, Joe. Now, let me finish. Let me finish. When we became acquainted on the voyage, perhaps I mentioned my dear wife. I am saddened to report that she passed on to the great beyond a few months ago, leaving a great void in my heart. However... Recognizing the eternal nature of the spirit, I am not completely desolated. My one problem now is to locate a trustworthy medium who can bring my dear Agnes back to me. You mean she actually replied to that? (laughs) She thought she did remember me. And she gave me the name of the lady who's querying the stock deal. It's Olivia Nemo, South Court Street, New York City. Oh, terrific. I'll go see this pony and make a deal. I've been to see her, Sam. Well, Well, what did she say? Will she make a deal? No. Mrs. Nemo's not a very cooperative type. I suspect she has her own ideas about Mrs. Sorensen's investments. That's why she's spending so much time gaining her trust. Well, what do we do now? Well, I think it's simple enough. We offer the lady more than Mrs. Nemo is offering. Like uh, what? Well, for one thing, I know that the lady doesn't attempt to bring back any image of Mrs. Sorensen's late husband. Oh, well, Mrs. Sorensen wouldn't be fooled by some phony ectoplasm stuff. But what if Mrs. Sorensen actually saw her dead husband? Saw him just the way he looked when he was alive. But yet, obviously now part of a heavenly community. What are you getting at, Mr. Kane? Well, I've written one more letter to Mrs. Sorensen from the same old ship companion. A dear Mrs. Sorensen, thank you so much for recommending your friend Mrs. Nemo. However, since writing you, I discovered the most remarkable medium I've encountered in all my 70 years. A man named Shan Kazar who has produced the beloved image of my wife, Agnes, right before my eyes. The living image, moving, talking, smiling, expressing her serenity and joy in the hereafter. Oh, for heaven's sake. But who is this Shan Kazar? Well, can't you guess, Vanessa? It's me. Morning, George. Can't tell you how good it is to see you. That's good to see you, too, Phil. I'll tell you one thing, George. Those plastic surgeons did one heck of a job. You look great. As you know, that fire bullet didn't just burn off my features. It did a pretty good job on my mind. I couldn't tell them what I used to look like because I didn't know. Sure, I remember, but what the heck? Here you are, and here I am. Well, some other things are different, Phil. You stayed in the Army. Hey, I see I have to call you Colonel now. Tell me what I can do for you. If it's possible, I'll do it. You know that. Well, it's a kind of unusual request, Phil. It's about those holographic image identifications they made during the moon revolt. The HID? Sure, I remember. The Rebs were doing such a great job of infiltration, the security insisted on three-dimensional projection holographs of every officer. They're pretty spooky, aren't they? You could swear the person was in the same room with you. Are they still on file? Sure. Someplace. Why? Because there's one that I want to borrow. The holograph of a major named John Sorensen of the 1st Moon Division. Well, I don't know. The Moon Revolt was five years ago. Records are all in the Pentagon vaults. But you can do it, can't you? Well, I do have a good buddy in personnel. All right, I'll do my best. You're a moon revolt veteran, Mr. Kane. I don't think I've met one of those in years. Well, not many moon veterans like to admit it. It wasn't the most 
glorious action in military history. Sam told me you were very badly wounded. Yes. My face. Oh, how awful. Well, maybe not. For all I know, the surgeons gave me a lot better face than I had originally. You really don't remember. I remember very little before that fire bullet hit. Oh, it's dreadful. I mean, the whole the whole war was just sickening. The moon colonists got the nutty idea that they ought to be an independent nation. Didn't they realize that they'd never had a chance? It took two years just the same. Two very bloody years. Oh. I still remember hearing about... Well, about that horrible night. The mass suicide. Mm. It was only a few days after the surrender. All the leaders of the revolt, I guess they decided they'd rather die than face trial. All those bodies piled up in the crater Aristarchus. Oh, it gives me the shivers to think about it. Have you ever seen his statue? Who? The man they call Arrigo, the leader of the revolt. There's a statue of him at the base of the crater. The only reminder left of what happened there. That's funny, isn't it? When the revolt was happening, everybody hated that man, Arrigo. But now, now I suppose we all think of him as some kind of hero. All martyrs become heroes, I guess. But when they sent me to the moon, all I cared about was getting off alive. And now? Now, what do you care about, Toby? Staying alive, the best way I know how. And if that means fleecing a rich old widow, here's to the fleecing. I hope you know what you're doing, Toby. My name is Shan Kazar. Yeah, but your name might turn into a number if this HID thing doesn't work. It does work, Sam. It's unbelievable. Oh, Mrs. Sorensen is here. All right, get behind the curtain, Sam. Pull the switch when I give the signal. Remember now, the key word is light. Come in, Mrs. Sorensen. I hope I'm not late. Oh, no. No, no, you're just in time. Uh, Mrs. Sorensen, let me introduce you to Shan Kazar. I am delighted to meet you, madame. I am very pleased to meet you, Mr. Kazar. If you can really bring poor John back to Earth, even for a moment... Mrs. Sorensen, I promise that you will not be disappointed. The spirits are present. I can see something, something glowing in the darkness. It's a light. A light from the other world. Can you see it, Mrs. Sorensen? Oh, oh, yes, I see something. Someone. Oh, oh, dear God, it's heaven. It's him. It's my husband. Edith. Edith, my darling. Oh, John. It's really you. Edith, my sweet. I am well and happy. I have found peace here. What is it like, John? Where are you? Oh, please, tell me. Do not ask me such questions, Edith. You must guard your health and your finances. You must take care of the money I left you. Yes. Yes, I will. You must invest it, Edith. Invest it wisely. But how, oh, John? You told Madame Nemo. No. Do not believe that woman. She is an imposter, Edith. This is the first moment I have spoken to you from the other side. But what about the money? Should I invest it in those asteroid shares? Yes, my precious wife. I have had a glimpse of tomorrow. You will be wealthy. You will continue to have the earthly comforts I wish for you until the hour of our reunion. John, you're beginning to fade. I must go now, Edith. I must return. Wait. One more moment. He is going, Mrs. Sorensen. Back to beyond the curtain. It was marvelous, Toby. You absolutely gave me the creeps. I've really got to give you credit. You're still the best in the business. Well, let's wait for the payoff, Sam. Let's 
get that money in our hands before we congratulate each other. Do you want me to get that? No, I'll take it. Hello? Toby, it's Phil Digby. Yes, Phil, how are you? Listen, Toby, about that HID projection. It really did the trick. You don't know how much you helped, Mr. Sorensen. I just don't know what went wrong. My friend in the Pentagon goofed. Goof? What are you talking about? The holograph reel. It was the wrong one. It was a Major Warrenberg of the 6th Infantry. He isn't even dead. He's retired up in Nova Scotia. Toby, you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, Phil, I'm here. And, uh, don't worry about it. The old lady's eyesight wasn't that good. I guess the uniform was enough. Wow, that's a relief. Then you don't want the right reel. No, 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 that's okay. It's all over now. And thank you again, Phil. What is it, Toby? Is something wrong? Oh, I don't know. But that wasn't Major Sorensen the old lady saw. And I don't think her eyes were that bad. She knew I wasn't oriental even with this makeup on. What I'd like to know is... Who's playing tricks on who? Toby Kane is a man who's used to having things go the way he planned. But suddenly, a victim of a swindle has done something unexpected. Mrs. Sorensen has been fooled too easily. And Toby Kane has learned that nothing comes that easy. Not even in the world of 2043. We'll return to that world with Act Two shortly. Toby Kane, con man, has a disturbing riddle to solve. Why did Mrs. John Sorensen react so quickly to the ghost of a man who was clearly not her husband? Toby brooded about it for the next 24 hours. But then something happened that gave him something else to think about. A familiar visitor came to his door. Mr. Kane? Uh, yes, who... Uh... My name is Moffat, Mr. Kane. I'm with the Interplanetary Police. May I come in? Um, would you mind telling me your business? I'll tell you inside, if I may. Truth is, Mr. Kane, I'm here to do you a favor. What kind of favor? How long have you known Mr. Sam Thumbs? Sam? Oh, uh, about a month. I met him at a party. Mm -hmm, That's what I thought. Why, what's the trouble? Mr. Kane, I'll be candid with you. We ran a fast check on Mr. Thumbs' associates. We uh, couldn't find you among them. So we figured you were a recent acquaintance and possibly his next victim. Victim? Of what? Well, I'm sorry to tell you that Sam Thumbs is a confidence man. He's been indicted for grand larceny some four times in his career. He's never been sent to jail because his victims were too involved in his schemes to testify against him. But he's still a criminal. And he may be out to defraud you. Well, I, uh, I certainly appreciate this warning, Sergeant. Captain! My title is Captain Moffat. Well, I promise you that I'll be very careful. Yes, very careful. From now on. Yes? Oh, Mrs. Sorensen, I'm the one who called this morning. Oh, yes. You said your name was... What again? King. Toby King. Uh. However, my name was George Spanner when I served with your late husband in the first moon division. Yes, yes. Oh, won't you come in? Very good of you to see me, Mrs. Sorensen. Um, oh, I see you have a portrait of your husband. Yes. Well, he's certainly a fine-looking man. Mr. Spanner, or Kane, or whatever you call yourself, uh, would you kindly tell me why you wish to see me? Well, as I said, your husband and I were in the same hospital together. That simply is not true. Pardon? My husband was killed at the Battle of Pluto Crater. He was never brought to any hospital. He died instantly. Now, just what is it you want? All right, Mrs. Johnson. I'll put my cards on the table. 
I understand that you're interested in purchasing stock in the Saturnian Asteroid Company. And that you've been talking to a man named Sam Fouts. Why should that be any business of yours? Because I believe I can save you a great deal of money. I know certain things about Mr. Fouts. And about this asteroid mining project. I'm sorry, Mr. Kane, but I am not interested in what you have to say. But you can give me a chance. Yes. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm giving you one chance to leave this place before I call the police. Sam, something is wrong here. Very wrong. Now tell me again. How did you get the lead... On old lady Sorensen. It was Vanessa. Vanessa? So what? Well, didn't it ever occur to you that Vanessa might have been part of a police trap? Did you ever stop to think she might have been working for my old friend Moffat? Moffat's on Callisto. He's on Earth here. A few hours ago, he was in my hotel room trying to protect me from you. Oh, Vanessa's okay, Toby. I swear it. Listen, it was her idea to get you into the act. What did you say? It's true. Vanessa was the one who told me that you were available. Oh, you fool. Don't you see what that means? How could Vanessa know so much about me unless the cops told her? Toby, I just don't understand why you're so upset when everything is going just the way we planned. The way who planned, Vanessa? Tell me how you knew about my escape from Callisto. Oh, this is ridiculous. I didn't even know you were George Spanner or Harry, whatever you called yourself. It was Sam who found out you were back on Earth. That's not what he says. Toby, the only reason I stayed interested in Sam was because he was your friend. Because I wanted to get close to you. This close. Oh! Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. These long fingernails of mine, they scratched your neck. Now you can scratch your memory. You can tell me if you know a cop named Captain Moffat. Don't do this, Toby. Be nice to me the way I want to be nice to you. Kiss me, Toby. Toby, aren't you feeling well? I feel dizzy all of a sudden. Oh, poor darling. Come, sit down. My neck is burning. Oh, these awful cat claws of mine. I really should cut them down, shouldn't I? I... I can't see straight anymore. Oh. You... Uh, you did something to me. Stuck a pin in my neck. Toby, sit here. Don't fall and hurt yourself. I'm drugged. You've drugged me with something. I can't see. Can't stand... Uh. Luckily for you, must have been a powerful drug they used. Not enough to kill, however. My only regret is that we didn't catch them in the act. What are you talking about? I've been keeping a tail on Thumbs and his girlfriend for the past week. His girl? You mean Vanessa isn't working for you? Uh -huh. Those two are in business for themselves, Mr. Kane. Or, uh, should I say Mr. Murchis? Or Mr. Snapper? <laughs> You pick the name, my friend. You have plenty of them. The name is Kane. Toby Kane. <laughs> it's funny, you know. I've been chasing you for five years. From Earth to Saturn to Callisto. And then I catch you by helping you get out of a jam. <laughs> Life's a little irony. You've made a mistake, Captain. Oh, forget it, Kane. We've already run you through a computer ID. We know who you are. Now, uh, if you uh, help me... I'll help you. I'll guarantee you full amnesty for any past offense. I'll promise you immunity for any crime you've committed. <laughs> and that's a long, long list. What's the catch? Just what you might expect. The assignment I'd want you to handle is uh, difficult, dangerous. Do you, uh, do you know why you were drugged, Cain? Because you must have found out too much about them. You you must have stumbled onto something they want very much to conceal. What's that? Their real identities. Not Sam. 
he he's exactly what he seems to be. A hopelessly inept con man, hardly worth a paperwork it would take to arrest him. But the other, Vanessa, and Mrs. Sorensen. Mrs. Sorensen? What does she have to do with this? Well, they're members of the most dangerous, subversive group on Earth. We have good reason to think they and their friends are ready to commit treason. Treason? Against who? Against the entire world. Against the planet Earth. Why, you're crazy. Are you saying those two women are plotting another moon revolt? Oh, not alone, I assure you. There may be hundreds or even thousands of others ready to repeat the same madness of five years ago. We think that both of these women are related to the men that we thought had died in the crater Aristarchus. Thought they died? Their graves are there. Yes. But we're beginning to doubt the identities of the men buried in those graves. Now, we've begun to suspect that the Earth forces were victimized by a hoax. A con game, if you like. You mean they're still alive? Arigo and the others? No, we don't know how many. Maybe only a handful. But I want you to continue to play the game you've always played. But this time, on our side of the law. What game? Well... I want you to continue to be a cheat, a swindler, a liar, a pretender. Only I want you to victimize a very special group of suckers. A group we've observed closely for the past year. Now, we, we know their habits. We know their meeting place. We know everything. Except their plans for the moon. Now, that's what I want you to find out. Now, why should I be successful? Because you're going to have another face change, Kane. An official one this time. Uh, here, we want you to look like the man in this photograph. My God. That's right. It's the man they call Arrigo. Uh-huh, here's the printout. Now, you take these, Kane. They contain every available fact in the life of Arrigo. Ten biographers couldn't have collected so much data if they'd conducted ten years' worth of research apiece. Well, it's still not going to work. Even if I learn every single fact there is to know, there'll be other facts that could trip me up. Yes, we uh, recognize that possibility. It won't be enough to have Arrigo's face, even his voice, and memory, and manner. There are certain things about people, things that, that can't deceive those who are close to them. Yes, but they'll want to believe, Kane. Don't you see... These people have been waiting for Arrigo as if he was some kind of messiah come to rescue them from oppression. Oh, they'll welcome you without suspicion. A million things can go wrong. Yes, and then you're a dead man. Well, it's the gamble you'll have to take or reject. The alternative, of course, is jail. Yes, a prison asteroid, Kane. You live out the rest of your life on a barren rock in space. And if I do this thing, amnesty? That's correct. What a shame. And I was just getting to like this face. There's an old saying that one must set a thief to catch a thief. But does it really apply here? Can a swindler, a con man... And a criminal have enough brains and heart to overcome a group of dangerous insurgents? Can Toby Kane walk into their midst and learn their most important secrets? Or will he die in the attempt? We'll find out shortly in Act Three. Three months before Captain Moffat of the Interplanetary Police was able to put his plan into action. The actual face change took only a week. The recuperation took two weeks. But the rest of the time was spent in educating Toby Kane to talk, think, and feel like the rebel called Arrigo. Finally, they knew there was nothing further they could do but send Arrigo on his mission. Beginning with the first name on top of the list of suspected sympathizers. Come in, Mr. Duncan. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you, Doctor. Well, shall we get right down to it? I always believe that... Something wrong, Doctor? Ah, uh, no, 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 it's nothing. It's, uh, it's just that for a moment you looked uh, rather familiar, like uh, 
someone I knew a very long time ago. I see. Can I, uh, can I take this chair? Oh, yes, 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 please. Uh, we'll just talk informally at first. You can tell me what your problem is, and I'll tell you whether or not I believe that psychotherapy can be helpful. Well, I'm not sure I can describe the problem. I've been having fits of depression lately. been having strange dreams every night. Yes, can you describe one of these dreams? Well, last night, for instance, I dreamed that I was walking in outer space, surrounded by stars and meteors. I was just alone. Alone? But then I looked below me and saw a soft, glowing object. It looked warm and friendly and inviting. Once I had been afraid of it. Once I had thought of it as being cold and airless and alien. But now, I knew it was home. And what was this object? It was the moon. And it was mine. Who are you? Does this dream mean anything to you, Doctor? If it doesn't, then I think we're wasting each other's time. Who are you? I'm a ghost, Doctor. A ghost from Aristarchus. But a very solid ghost. Here, take my hand. Arrigo. Arrigo! Yes, Doctor, Arrigo. I've been a long time getting back. But we were so sure that you were killed. I survived. Now I'm here. And now I'm ready to help. I've heard that there are plans. Dr. Selwyn. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There are good plans. This time we won't make the same mistakes. We're going to be ready before we strike. And when will that be? Well, the date hasn't been set. There's been too much disagreement among the members of the Central Committee. But now, maybe now, the new leader among us... How, Doctor? How will it begin? Well, in the only way left to us, Arrigo, we won't begin on the moon, but on Earth. Earth? We're, we're beginning right here. Preparing our weapons right in the camp of the enemy. What weapons do you have? Moon to earth missiles with atomic warheads. The weapons we should have had before the revolt. The only weapon that will give us the iron fist we need to make our voices heard. By the time we're ready to declare the moon a sovereign power, we'll be pointing the warheads at the continents of Earth. <laughs> We won't fire them if our demands are met. And if not? Then we'll make sure that Earth never forgets the price of tyranny. But how can you build these missiles? Where? Well, I'll show you, Arrigo. How strange, Doctor. So much noise in a hospital. <laughs> well, this is a very unusual hospital, Arrigo. Populated by a very... Unusual breed of lunatics. Lunatics? Yes. The idea came to us five years ago. What would be a better hiding place for our activities than a mental home? <laughs> so we built this hospital and filled its rooms and wards only with patients marked by that special madness of the moon, children. <laughs> it was a brilliant idea. Well, what you see here is only the tip of the iceberg. That noise you hear comes from below, from an underground missile factory. We'll go on a tour of inspection later. But right now, we have a meeting to attend. Then we were expected. I've alerted all the members of the Central Committee. They're in the main conference room. I, I don't have to tell you that this is a great moment for all of us. It's, please come this way. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Arrigo. 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 You fools. This is not Arrigo. This is not my son. No, wait, wait. You, you must give him a chance. You think I wouldn't know my own son? This man is an imposter, an impersonator. You've been duped by a police. I shall win. But I've talked to him. I've asked him questions that no one but Arrigo himself could answer. Well, you must remember it's been years since you've seen him, Mrs. Sorensen. Mrs. Sorensen? So that's what you're calling yourself now, Mother, huh? Whatever happened to the name, uh, Mrs. Lincoln? You think you're very clever, don't you? I remember how you picked that name. 
out of an old history book. Where did you get Sanson from, Mother? You think you can convince me, don't you? But you're wrong, the imposter. You really are my son. Sing it. Sing the song we used to sing together when you were a little boy. I, uh, I don't think I can remember it. My son would never forget that song. It's been so many years. Arrigo would never forget. But Arrigo is dead. And you must die, too. Now, wait, wait. Listen to me. Mother, if you'll just look at me more closely. Like this. <laughs> look out. He's got her. Don't shoot. You'll hit Mrs. Sorensen. That's right, everybody. You'll hurt your friend, Mrs. Sorensen. And if you don't let me out of this place, I'll hurt her myself. She, she's an old woman. Yes, and I haven't killed an old woman for days. I'm feeling the urge right now. So let me out. This is marvelous, Kane. Absolutely marvelous. With this information, you can wipe out this nest of rebels in six hours. They were so anxious to believe that Arrigo had returned that they forgot to be cautious. Well, you've done a magnificent job, Kane. A magnificent job for us and for the entire world. I don't want any medals, Captain. I just want that freedom you promised me. Well, uh, a medal would be a lot easier. What was that? Freedom is the only thing I can't grant you, Kane. I know I made you promises. What are you talking about? What's that gun for? I wish things could be different, Kane. You've accomplished something that I could never have done by myself. You saved thousands, perhaps millions of lives. But that doesn't blind me to the fact that you're a criminal. A dangerous criminal who can't be turned loose in society. I can't believe this after you swore... The only oath I've ever taken sacred is the oath of my office. And you're not sending me to any prison asteroid, Moffat. You'll have to kill me. I'm a policeman, Kane, not an executioner. But I can be both if you force me. Well, then you'll have to be both. Don't let you... Are you all right? Have you been hit? My leg. Stay where you are. I'll get a doctor. Vanessa, you killed him. You killed Martha. To save you. And to save us. Well, then you're one of them, too. The moon rebel. Mrs. Sorensen told me what happened. I thought you might return here, that you would never meet Moffat on his home ground. Well, then why don't you kill me, too? I know as much as Moffat does. Please try to understand. They didn't know who you were at the hospital. They didn't know you were Toby Kane. Toby Kane? That doesn't make any sense. Mrs. Sorensen didn't know you were Kane. That's why she accused you of being an imposter. I don't understand. Listen. And listen hard. I was the one who got Sam Thomas to send for you. I drugged you because we planned to kidnap you, to take you to the hospital where we hoped to restore your memory, to help you recall the past. And they tried that at the Army Hospital. Yes, we know. Your memory was destroyed the night we died in the crater Aristarchus. Most of us escaped, but... You were brought down by a fire bullet. You were wearing an Earth uniform so that you were mistaken for one of them and brought to a hospital on Earth. We didn't know the true facts then. We thought you'd been killed. But after the war, we found records. Records that made us believe that you were alive, Arrigo. Truly alive. Arrigo? Yes. You're Arrigo. The face you wear is your own face. What an ironic joke on Captain Muffet. He gave you back the face you were born with. And Mrs. Sorensen? Your mother. She did believe you were an imposter because she knew that her son was wearing the face of Toby Kane. She never expected to see a regal with his own face. I can't believe it. I, I, I don't remember anything before the hospital. They had me convinced that I was an Earth soldier. I never knew why I hated the fact so much. You will remember. We need you to remember. We need you to lead us. And I need you to love me. Look at me, Toby Kane. Arrigo. I am your wife. Here it is, Colonel. A recorded message from the moon base. Put it on the screen, you idiot. Let's hear what this madman has to say. Yes, sir. I can't understand it. A whole garrison of moon troops surrendering without firing a shot. And now this, 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 this lunatic with his demands. All ready, Colonel. Well, play it, play it. 
My name is Arrigo. It is him. My name is Arrigo. And I am spokesman for the provisional government of Luna. The moon is no longer a satellite of Earth. From this day forward, the moon is an independent world with full sovereign powers to choose its own leaders and determine its own future. We are prepared to defend this independence with our lives because we are the children of the moon. And the moon is ours. <laughs> So the children of the moon, the lunatics, whose first revolt failed, have once again asserted their right to independence. Will it succeed this time? Have they prepared themselves enough to convince the powers of Earth to let them find their own destiny? The answer to that question is in another story and another time. I'll be back shortly. ever really happen? Now that man has walked on the moon, will the next step be colonization? Will the moon become a new homeland where men will live in an artificial atmosphere, eclipsed by the great green globe of Earth, and yet become strangely devoted to the cold and rocky world they call home? Stranger things have happened. Our cast included Bob Reddick, Joan Shea, William Griffiths, and Jackson Beck. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Why are you doing this to me? My folks guided me. They found your ship. They found you. What do you want from me? No more searching. Your hands are my hands. No. Your eyes are my eyes. It's impossible. I again in the sunlight again. We live. No. We share this body. I survive in this body. No more darkness. No more aloneness. I survive in this body. You can't take over another person's body. We share this body. It's indecent. But this body must adjust. Adjust to the heat of this body. It's too warm. I'm, I'm so hot. We are hot. We must do something about the heat. What's wrong with me? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. <laughs>